and this is our 50th annual banquet. 50 years of celebrating Polish American athletes from around the world and right here located in Troy, Michigan. It's a great place. If you haven't been to our banquets or just know about the Polish Sports Hall of Fame, it's an eye-opening experience. Uh, I came to be part of this group many years ago working the silent auction and then became on the board uh, with guys like uh, D Dave uh, Jansen and Jim Conrad and Jerry Detloff. Great personalities, great people with the common cause of promoting Polish American athletes and celebrating that. That's our mission. This event has about 400 people here tonight, great, great Polish food, and we're just enjoying the camaraderie and we've been able to bring back 19 of our former athletes. So it's the first year we've never really inducted anyone, but it, we brought them all back, uh, over the 160 that have been in our uh, existence that are in the Hall of Fame. We brought 19 back, and I think with the red carpet and the event we had here tonight, it's become a great event. Pete Banizak. <laughs> where we start in football, basketball, and track, and a stellar running back for three years for the University of Miami, Florida. Banizak played his entire 13-year pro football career with the Oakland Raiders. We're Polish. Because he's Polish. Yeah. It's part of our heritage. It's part yeah. of our lineage. It's, yeah. We're proud to be Polish Americans. And yeah. my grandfather uh, came over in 1918 to avoid the Russian army coming in. and. That's why I'm here, and we appreciate all the sacrifices our 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 our, our heritage has, has done for us to be an American. We're proud today, of today, and we're proud of it, and proud of what yeah. they what they're doing now. Yeah. And you are a football player, and you are. He's a football player. player. Yeah, Oakland Raiders Super Bowl champ. Yeah, and we got yeah. a Super yeah. Bowl ring. Yeah. Yeah, I had a national championship yeah. ring from Notre Dame, but this yeah. Super Bowl ring is pretty cool. Yeah, so you, I, you, I play, you play got with, all the bases covered here. Yeah, okay. yeah. I played with Pete, but... This was the biggest uh, trophy in the sport, yes, in your football game. Yeah, Yaxi Marsh. Yeah. I grew up with my grandparents. Dubja, G. Goya. Mitchell yeah. Sparkowitz, 1960s tennis phenom from Hamtramck, Michigan, began her rise to world tennis prominence by winning 17 age group titles as a junior, including the Wimbledon girls singles title in 1964. Over the next seven years, Peaches dazzled the tennis world, earning three medals in the 1968 Olympics. Yes, three medals in one Olympics, one silver and two bronze, and a Fed Cup championship in 1969 with a 7-0 record in Fed Cup singles play. In 1970, she combined with Billie Jean King to win the final and deciding doubles match against Virginia Wade and Winnie Shaw to clinch the Whiteman Cup. Next, Rachel Commissar Ball was a three-time Southeastern Conference champion and a seven-time NCAA All-American swimmer at the University of Kentucky from 1996 through 1999. Swimming freestyle and butterfly, she was named SEC Swimmer of the Year in 1999. Commissar Ba was a member of the U.S. national team that won two Olympic medals and 13 world championship medals. I actually didn't start swimming until I was 15 years old. So um, I was a gymnast early on uh, from the age of five. So. I think my mom got tired of me like breaking all the cushions and springs on the couches and stuff. So they, they put me in gymnastics to help me come out of my shell and, you know, to get rid of some of my energy and, um, actually had a, a fracture of two of my vertebrae when I turned fit, when I was around 15 years old and the doctors basically didn't want me to do any other sport besides swimming. So I got in the water, didn't like the water. Didn't like to put my face in the water, but really liked to compete. And so um, just kind of persevering and pushing through that and, you know, took to the water pretty quickly after I got through the fear of that and swam in high school and then went on to swim at the University of Kentucky uh, before starting my professional year and training for the Olympics. Such an honor to be able to be inducted. This is, this means so much to me. Um, my grandparents were actually slaves during World War II. Um, for the German army and uh, grateful that they were slaves and not worse. Um, 
but my father came over to the United States when he was six. Um, so just really grateful for my heritage and for the opportunity to be able to come to the United States and still be able to represent my Polish heritage. Um, it just means a lot to me and, and to see what my family has overcome to give me, um, you know, this, this freedom to be able to train and to compete and, you know, all everything that I have is really due to their hard work and perseverance and really, really tough time. So this means a lot to me. Uh, did you have a chance to visit Poland? What's that? Uh, yes, I have visited Poland, actually, yes. All my family, I mean, so my grandpa, my grandfather was the only one of the Komazar clan that came over um, to the United States. So he had 10 brothers and sisters that still live in Poland. So um, it was when my grandfather was still alive, but we went and visited, um, I think it was 2011. Um, and I met, I got to meet all my family, got to meet all my cousins. Um, so it was a great time. Such a beautiful country. I just absolutely loved it. We had a wonderful time. And I was able to go back with my grandfather, with my parents and some of my other relatives to meet, meet our family there. Um, and they took us around and showed us around. And yeah, it was wonderful. I loved it. Julene Brzezinski Simpson. John F. Kennedy College, Simpson enjoyed a stellar collegiate basketball career, leading her team to two national AAU championships. She was a four-time AAU All-America and twice named MVP of the tournament in 1973 and 74. Simpson competed in 11 international competitions, helping the U.S. win gold at the 1975 Pan Am Games and silver medals at the 1976 Olympics I was born into a Polish-Lithuanian family. Uh, I was the youngest of three. I learned how to play basketball. Uh, my older brother of two years, I went and played with the boys with all the sports. I learned how to walk like the guys, talk like the guys, spit like the guys. So it really did help me. Um, I have an opportunity to go to a school that learned uh, how to speak Polish. For me to be here today um, and being honored as the uh, one of the living members here for the Polish American Sports Hall of Fame uh, in 2017, I was inducted. It was a great honor. It really brought back a lot of memories of what it was for me as a young child in my house. My mother and father used to make the uh, sausage, uh, fresh sausage and also the smoked sausage and how they just grinded it up and uh, put it in the casings and we hung it in our house and uh, potato pan cakes were uh, one of the big things. So for me, when I was uh, called and said you are going to be inducted, it was uh, maybe a, for me a dream come true. Very surprised, but I but it was a dream, you know, like I knew it was there was a Polish American Sports Hall of Fame, but you never there's so many wonderful people in the United States. So it was an honor. And after being inducted, I have tried to wear pins. I've wear jackets. I have their shirts. So being from New Jersey, people ask me, where is the Sports Hall of Fame? So I'm able to uh, advertise for them. I think one of my greatest moments as a basketball player was uh, I was selected on the very first Olympic women's basketball team, 1976, Ann Myers Drysdale, who is also here in the Polish American Sports Hall of Fame. She and I were teammates. I was selected with Pat Head Summit as being the co-captains. That was the very first time that women's basketball was in the Olympics and we won the silver medal. It was in Montreal, Canada. Actually, we had to qualify for that. And how we qualified is two weeks before the Olympics, we played at McMaster University and we won the gold medal there, which then allowed us two weeks later to go to the Montreal Olympics and be part of that 21st Olympiad. I wore 15 in the Olympics. Annie wore 15 in college, so you'll see both 15s. Right, Annie wore seven in the Olympics, so, because uh, I already had 15. Yeah, so it was, you know, when you, you go around and you look, it is something that you can't explain sometimes, the feeling. It's just, it overwhelms you 
And uh, it's almost reminded me when I looked at my trophy case today, I was looking at remembering what it was like in 76. When you're there on the podium and you get something special, it's like, it's hard to explain when people say, how did you feel when you got a medal? You know, you're just overtaken. It's just breathtaking. And you just, you look around. I remember standing on the podium, looking around in Montreal and seeing like, and thanking all my opponents, my parents, you know, in my mind, just thanking everyone because it really took a lot for me to be there and to represent my country, which is, I played on 11 international uh, teams that represented the United States. My last one was the Olympics and we won a silver medal. Among all these people, who do I admire most who's in here? Probably my teammate, Ann Myers because I just, she's a one of 11. I don't know if you've interviewed her, but she is fantastic. Like she has really taken women's basketball and moved it ahead. And all the things she does, she's broadcaster. You know, she does a lot of clinics, she does speaking. Um, she really is the voice for us. Bob Brzezinski, a native of Fremont, Ohio. Brzezinski played football at Ohio State from 1973 to 1976. During his years there, he played on four Big Ten championship teams and in three Rose Bowls and one Orange Bowl. Brzezinski was a first round draft choice of the LA Rams in 1977 and played 13 years in the NFL. Tom D has excelled in the sport of hydroplane racing as a famed driver, designer, and builder. As a driver, he has won national championships in nearly every class of hydroplane racing. He is the winner of three APBA Gold Cups and the, and the added Prince Edward Canadian Gold Cup titles in 1974, 76, and 80. My mother is a Perkowski and uh, she was born in Natrona, Pennsylvania, and uh, migrated to Hamtramck, Michigan, which is a Polish community. And I really was born and raised on the east side of Detroit. And in that era, when I was a little boy, they had as many as three unlimited hydroplane races on the Detroit River. It was a, quite a big deal. Us uh, neighborhood kids could ride our bicycles uh, from Ashland all the way down to Keens, where we knew where the pit area was going to be, and we get to see Guy Lombardo and Chuck Thompson, Danny Foster, a lot of these hydroplane heroes from our our day when we were just children. And I knew at that point, sometime, I would want to start racing boat. Never dreamed that I ever get to drive a Gold Cup boat, but I wanted to race outboards and inboard hydroplanes. My favorite class was the 135 cubic inch class, and it. I ended up setting world records in that class and winning national championships. And that's really what uh, propelled my career to where I got to drive a junior Gold Cup boat, a seven liter called Sunshine Baby, and then the unlimited ride for George Simon, Miss US, US Equipment Company here in Detroit. So uh, my Polish heritage has always been there. My grandmother used to make Krzczyki, which was my favorite dessert. There's not many racers that are in the Hall of Fame. And so proud to be one of the three that have been inducted. Yes. Next, Jim Dombrowski. Entering the University of Virginia's offensive line from 1982 to 85, Dombrowski finished his brilliant college career as UVA's first ever unanimous All-American. A two-time winner of the Jacob Blocking Trophy and three-time first-team All-ACC selection, Dombrowski was equally impressive in the classroom, earning first-team academic All-Conference honors as well. Steve Jabby, a highly regarded referee in the National Basketball Association for 25 years, Steve Jabby officiated 1,514 regular season games 243 playoff games and 23 NBA Finals games from the 1986-87 season through the 2010-2011 season. It's actually mentored by my father who was inducted posthumously before I was. My father was Stan Jabby. He was inducted for as an NFL official who refereed 30 years in the NFL and four Super Bowls. So 
refereeing kind of runs in our family. I have a godfather who's not Polish, but he was also an umpire in the American League in baseball. So officiating just happens to be in our family here. Both sides of my grandparents came over from Poland. And I still remember my mom's reaction when Saint John Paul II was elected Pope. We had like a party for like a whole week. That's how proud our family has been and still is of our Polish heritage. I'm not, I haven't been blessed to have children, but I have 10 nephews and two nieces. Half the nephews are Polish and they just love the heritage. And my sister, God bless her, she's the one that has the recipes because my mom has handed those recipes down of the Kruszczykis and the Gołomkis and the pierogies and the Bosch and the Babka. She has all those recipes. And it's one thing we just sit around the table at Easter time, especially. And think of mom and dad and our Polish heritage and so proud to be Polish American. Uh, have you visited Poland? We have been in Poland. We've been in Krakow, uh, Zakopane. We did, it's where, I mean, my wife said, of all the places we've been, she would want to go back to Krakow again. That's how beautiful it is and the people are just wonderful. So I've been very blessed in my life to be a Polish American, but also to visit the homeland and also to be a proud member of this wonderful sports hall of fame. Christina Koznick, one of the most decorated female World Cup slalom racers in U.S. history racing 12 World Cup seasons with six World Cup wins, 20 podiums, and 55 top 10 finishes. She was the top U.S. female in World Cup Slalom standings every year from 1995 to 2005. I was inducted into the U.S. National Ski Hall of Fame, and it was a beautiful ceremony and everything was great. But when I came here, I was blown, I was just blown out of the water. Like everyone was so kind. The, the video, they had footage that I had never seen, literally like of my first World Cup win. And I just felt so welcomed and I felt really a part of a family and a community. And I was really excited to come back. And is it important for you to be that part, a member of the National Polish American Sports Hall of Fame? Yes, I Yeah, it's, so. it is really important to be a part of this family. I mean, it feels like a family when I meet other in inductees. Like, mm -hmm. so I met the two that I was inducted with, but now it's fun to be here and meet even more and you know even though our sports maybe are different we all have that common thread of being a polish american and um it's just it's it's pretty special next greg landry the first quarterback selected in the 1968 nfl draft landry chose an 11th overall after a stellar career at the university of massachusetts he played 15 seasons in the nfl with the lions Colts and Bears. He set numerous passing records with the Lions and was named to the Pro Bowl in 1971. He was also notable as a rusher with over 2,600 yards and 21 touchdowns in his career. Mike McCoy, defensive lineman at Notre Dame, where he starred for three seasons. In 1969, a unanimous All-American chosen as the UPI Lineman of the Year. He finished sixth in the Heisman Trophy voting that year. The Packers made him the second overall selection in 1970. Mike was also named Packers Rookie of the Year and twice led the Packers in sacks. Next, Ann Myers Drysdale, one of the greatest American basketball players. Ann Myers Drysdale was a four-time All-American basketball player at UCLA, leading the Bruins to the national championship in 1978. An integral part of the 1976 Olympic team that won the silver medal, Myers Drysdale was the number one pick in the Women's Pro Basketball League in 1978 and co MVP in 1980. Next, Tom Nowatsky, a three way threat at Indiana University at running back, linebacker, and place kicker. He earned all Big Ten honors in 1964 leading the Big Ten in rushing and scoring with an IU record 73 points. He was voted first team All-America by the American Football Coaches Association. In the 1965 Pro Football Draft, he was the first round pick of the Lions and also the AFL New York Jets. Next, June Olkowski, excelling as a student athlete at Rutgers from 1978 to 1982, Olkowski led the Scarlet Knights to the AIAW National Championship in her senior season 
averaging 19.6 points per game and 10.1 rebounds. He became only the second Rutgers player to be named a Kodak All-American. Olkowski later spent seven impressive seasons as the head coach at Butler, including a record of 114 and 56. Walt Patulski, a three-year starter at the University of Notre Dame, generally considered the best collegiate lineman in the country from 1969 to 1971. The six foot six pound of uh, 260 pound defensive end was a unanimous All-American in 1971, winning both the UPI Lineman of the Year Award and the Lombardi Award given annually to the nation's number one outstanding lineman. He finished ninth in voting for the Heisman Trophy. Congratulations. <laughs> Brian Smolinski started playing college hockey in 1989 at Michigan State University and was drafted number 21 overall in the 1990 draft. He joined the Bruins after completing his four years at MSU, where he was named all CCHA first team. He played 17 seasons in the NHL with the Bruins Penguins, Islanders, Kings, Senators, Blackhawks, Canucks, and Canadians. He surpassed a thousand games played in the NHL. You know, when I first got the call, I was a little, you know, taken back because you, you don't know the history of it yet. And then, you know, when you start digging into the, the history and, you know, what it means, and then you see some of the names that have been in here, you know, you, you really, it, it gets you here, gets you to the heart. And then you start reflecting on your family you know, my parents, my, you know, my dad's a Smolensky, my mom's a Jagosinski, so 100% Polish. Um, and to see their eyes light up a little bit because, you know, they're, they're going through it as well. Um, and to have all my, my kids and, you know, to see what dad did, it, it, it means so much. It just means so much to know that, you know, the family history is alive and well. Well, the, the, the lot of things I remember were family members coming to watch me play when I was a kid, you know, especially Zsa you know, our, our, our grandma, and they would love to watch, she would love to watch her grandkids play hockey. And, and I was one of the, you know, three grand, uh, grandchildren that she watched. And to see her, she passed early and, and, you know, when I was probably 15 or 16. But that was probably one of the best memories ever because, you know, she was older and she couldn't get around, but she wanted to watch us play. And, you know, for her and, you know, to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, it means so much. Well, you know, to play in the National Hockey League is an absolute dream come true. Every young player who puts on skates all over the world is dreaming to play at the highest level possible, and especially in the National Hockey League. So, you know, I'm very fortunate, especially coming from, you know, some of the humble beginnings. We, I grew up in Ohio, you know, kind of a farming, football, baseball. You know, hockey was a non-traditional sport, you know, and to get my, my father got me involved in the game. So, you know, to... To build on that, you know, and to be good at it and to take it into a university level and then be drafted and then just keep continuing, continuing the process and playing for 17 years. I thought, you know, hey, once you get there, you're like, OK, I want to stay for a couple of years, three or four. But I stayed for almost two decades and very proud of that. Never won a Stanley Cup. I would have traded anything to win a Stanley Cup, but it um, nonetheless. How close you were? I was close twice, lost two Game 7 conference finals, uh, 95, 1995, and 02. So I was three minutes and 42 seconds of total of being in the Stanley Cup Finals, two of them. So it's bittersweet, but um, I, I had a wonderful career. Uh, you know, it's brought me here, so it's not so bad. The great Tiger left-hander, Frank Tanana. The California Eagles number one pick in the 1971 baseball draft out of Detroit Catholic Central High School. He had to decide among more than 100 college basketball scholarships. Fortunately for the Tigers, in 1987, he chose baseball. He notched 2,773 strikeouts to rank among the all-time leaders among left-handers. He pitched for the Angels, Red Sox, Rangers, Tigers, Mets, and Yankees. Frank, congratulations. Next, Evan Big Cat Williams. Known as the world's longest driver, the six foot six golfer burst onto the scene of professional golf and long drive competitions in 1974 by winning the World Challenge Long Drive Contest in New York with a blast of 366 yards. He defeated, among others, Jim Dent, considered the longest driver on the PGA Tour, and by the way, 
This must have been how, how the nickname came around after watching Williams. The great Joe DiMaggio said they should lock him up in a cage. Joe D said that. Congratulations. That was Big Cat Williams. Next, Elaine Zayak. After losing three toes in a lawnmower accident at the age of two, Elaine Zayak began figure skating as physical therapy. By the time she was 13, she had won both the Junior World Figure Skating Championships and the U.S. Junior Championship in 1979. Noted for her consistency in landing the triple jump, she won the gold medal at the U.S. National Championships in 1981. So 50 years ago, these are some of the things that were happening in the world that I wanted to share. So some of you may remember, some may be too young to even know that that was happening. But 50 years ago, President Nixon pulls the United States out of Vietnam and the peace agreement happens. The oil crisis, Roe v. Wade passes, and the year before that, Title IX had passed. President Nixon resigns. And the, we hear the Watergate hearings. And Gerald Ford becomes the United States 40th president, a Michigan man. Battles of the Sexes happens with Billie Jean King and Bobby Riggs. And also the U.S. Open, tennis U.S. Open happened with equal pay for women. The birth of hip hop. Secretariat wins the Triple Crown. The first mobile phone by Motorola, which was two and a half pounds. Coach John Wooden's UCLA basketball team would win their ninth championship in 10 years, and my brother David was a part of that team. Major League Baseball, Major League Baseball, the American League accepted the designated hitter rule, and Stan Musial became the first Polish American to be inducted. And also my dear friends, Michael Simpson and his wife, Julian Brzezinski Simpson, who was inducted in 2017, and my Olympic teammate in 1976 on our Olympic team, celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary two weeks ago. And a shout out to Cheryl and David, our board members, David Jansen. Eight days ago, they celebrated their wedding anniversary. Not quite 50, but you're on your way. Why are you grimacing, Cheryl? <laughs> a gallon of gas was 40 cents. A new car, as we are here in Detroit, $3,200 for a new car. A loaf of bread, 49 cents. A dozen eggs, 69 cents. Spam, tab, hamburger helper were the things that people were eating and drinking. Your income, your average income is $12,000. A new home would cost $32,500. And the movies of that day, The Exorcist, The Way We Were, American Graffiti, Enter the Dragon, which was one of my favorites, being in California. TV shows were MASH, Hawaii Five-0, The Waltons, Sanford and Son. Some of the songs were Tie a Yellow Ribbon, around the old oak tree, Crocodile Rock, Are You Are the Sunshine of My Life, Bad, Bad Leroy Brown. And so 50 years ago, I know for myself, I felt pretty young. And you think, well, how did I get here with the last name like Myers? And my daughter Drew, who was here in 2016 with me, is not here, but she had done Ancestry.com. And she did that history in finding out about our family background. Now, my mom is Irish, and so we knew about her nationality. We always talked about it. But my dad really didn't talk about his nationality that much. We knew he was a little bit Polish, German. And uh, when he was in college, at 18, he changed his name from Majorowski to Myrie. And so as I got older, we found out a lot of this information. And his dad was John Majorowski. And he used the name Myers because back in 1917, my grandfather received a letter from Charles Comiskey, 
the Chicago White Sox to try out. And we have that letter today. My great-grandfather and great-grandmother on my dad's side and his dad's side were from Poland and Germany. Majorowski and Dombrowski. So I definitely am Polish there. And on my dad's mom's side, her mom was a Jerkowicz. And thank goodness for my daughter to find out this information. Because it brings me to this wonderful, amazing, magical trip that David Jansen asked myself and Bob Brzezinski, who was fabulous with his brother coming, Dan, and Cheryl and your two daughters, Charlie and, or, uh, Callie and, and Charlie, we were able to experience an amazing trip. And I'd never been to Europe in the sense of being able to travel and, and experience something like that. And to go to Poland, and when I was here in 2016, I thought, there's no way I'm ever going to get to such a country like that. And playing basketball, Julian and I were talking about it early. We went to the Soviet Union, uh, we went to Japan, we went to Mexico, Canada, but nothing that where the kids today get to go to a lot of European teams. And Adele Zip from Poland contacted David a few years ago about having some Hall of Famers come to Poland and to be honored. He had no idea who Adela was. And unfortunately, it didn't happen right away because COVID hit. But she was persistent. David was generous enough to give her her time, give his time to her. And so after COVID hits, she continued to contact David. So July 15th this year, Bob and I, before we got there, as a matter of fact, though, uh, we were sent these boxes of foam. And I don't know about you, Bob, but I had no idea what it was for. And uh, they wanted our handprints in this phone and also our signature on a piece of paper. And so I know for me, I, I was doing it with my daughter who was at home at the time and, and we're trying to figure out what is this all about? And so we sent these boxes back that uh, with our phone handprints in them. And we went to this unbelievable town, Jezha, which first of all, I got there earlier than David and Bob did. Uh, because of my schedule and broadcasting. And so I got there and Adela picked me up in Krakow and we got to go sightsee. Um, but being in, in Jessa, this unbelievable town with the city center and with the Polish festival going on, with the music and the costumes and the dancing and just the support by everybody, it was amazing. And what we didn't realize what really was going to happen, that they took these foam uh, pads and they made them into bronze. They're like, what, two by two, three by three squares. And they had our handprints and along with three other Polish athletes at their sports complex. They took these bronze squares and put them into their sidewalks. And it was just, for me, it was breathtaking and so emotional to be a part of that. And uh, they had asked us to put our, get down and put our hands in it. I was great. His knees are good, they're better than mine. I couldn't get up. I fell down, they had to help me up. And uh, so graceful. But it was just an amazing trip and um, to be a part of that. And I, it's something that now I, I wanna go back every year because it's such a beautiful country. And with everybody participating um, and just feeling what it was like to be Polish. So when all of us had had a few days uh, to see Krakow and sightsee, uh, we saw the salt mines, we saw castles, we saw churches, the restaurants, and the food was amazing. And we got to go to the concentration camps of Auschwitz and Birkenau. And a lot of people don't realize that Auschwitz is in Poland. It's not in Germany. And last week, uh, it happened I don't know, I was going through channels what, trying to watch a movie and Schindler's List came on. And certainly I've seen it before, but this movie touched me even more now, knowing who I am and where my family comes from. And to know that the Polish Jews were being saved by a man that put in so much. But I left Poland admiring the pride and perseverance of its people, its country, a country that has survived for centuries, 
and from taking over from other countries of Poland, whether it be Prussia, Russia, Germany, Austria, Sweden, the Turks. You think about how old this land is in Poland and how amazing the people are. Because it being centrally located in that region, that's why Germany was able to use Auschwitz, because they had the trains go through, and Poland is the most centrally located country in Europe. But no matter your ethnicity or your religion, the pride of Polish people is one. And certainly with every inductee in this Hall of Fame, our pride, our passion, and perseverance to be winners comes from our ancestries. I thank you for letting me speak tonight, and I just want to say not only how proud I am to be Polish, I want to read this, this poem to you. It's by Edgar Guest. It says, be grateful. Be grateful for kindly friends that walk along your way. Be grateful for the skies of blue that smile from day to day. Be grateful for the health you own, the work you find to do. For round about you, there are those less fortunate than you. Be grateful for the growing trees, the roses soon to bloom, the tenderness of kindly hearts that shaped your days of bloom. Be grateful for the morning dew, the grass beneath your feet, the soft caress of your babes, all their laughter sweet. Acquire the grateful habit, learn to see how blessed you are, how much there is to gladden in life, how little life to mar. And what if rain shall fall today? Any of you with grief is, are sad, grateful that you can recall the joys that you have had. Jan Kuya. It's the very first time for me here in, in Michigan, and I'm very happy that uh, at this very first visit uh, in this wonderful state, uh, I'm visiting the National Polish American uh, Sports Hall of Fame at this wonderful anniversary, 50th anniversary, so half a century of a wonderful initiative uh, that is cherishing not only the Polish heritage, but also the Polish American heritage, heritage in a, the most American of all disciplines of sports. And I'm very, very happy about being here and taking part in these wonderful celebrations. And you know, they, all of them have Polish heritage. That's true, that's true. And that's why this makes this place so special that this Polish and America, American heritage here is so vibrant. And this community is not only cherishing history and the history of sports, but also cherishing contemporary times. I can see the most thriving community of all Polish communities probably in the United States, or at least the leading one. And this makes, uh, it's, it's such a heartwarming and heart melting uh, feeling to see this Polish spirit and Polish emotions being so vibrant here. Started by Stan Musial uh, 25 years ago is a scholarship and we provide six scholarships to uh, individuals from high schools. And uh, unfortunately, none of them could attend this year in September because they're in school and college. But it's been a, a great thing. And I think our goal is maybe to increase the, the uh, scholarship that we give to those students but we use six because of Stan Musial's number and so that's the synergy we have there. I really uh, wish to I really wish to be focused on promoting the stories of Polish Americans among the American public and to share more of these stories uh, in a ver variety of ways. Uh, we can do webinars, we can do conferences, we can do videos and we can do a lot of wonderful things that will help people get to know Poland better through the stories of wonderful Polish Americans. I always grew up loving Detroit sports. And I think uh, now I'm in the sports memorabilia business and I think that's just a culmination of my love for passion for sports and retail. And that's where the, the mesh of the Polish American Sports Hall of Fame comes into play because I get to meet these athletes and we, we work together with these athletes to keep the organization going and growing it. And what's the future of our organization? Well, we hope to induct three or four inductees again next year. We've got a lot of Polish-American athletes that are ready to join our group, and hopefully we can get them into our hall.